Hello again guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're taking things a little bit more sedately than usual. Initially I was hoping to do a live stream over the weekend but with Sim Update 5 having just arrived and not playing all that nicely with various add-ons I thought that we'd wait on that just a few more days to let things settle down. My next plan of action was to do some Airbus flying in X-Plane 11 but unfortunately my computer seems to have decided it's not too happy about that either. Anyway, long story short, as I think I've already mentioned to some of you, I think it's finally come to the point where I can no longer avoid upgrading my PC. So looking into options for that at the moment. In the meantime though, of course flight simming shouldn't be all stress and hassle, so we're taking a bit more of a sedate approach today. Going out for a little bit of a jolly in the Ants aeroplane Tiger Moth, which I've converted into Microsoft Flight Simulator. For those of you who weren't aware, it is actually possible to convert certain FSX and P3D add-ons into the sim. The results are fairly mixed, you'll see more of that when we get on board the aircraft, but overall it's a nice option to have, it certainly opens up a few possibilities within the sim. Most of these imported tools are fairly self-explanatory to use. My personal favourite at the moment is the MSFS Legacy Importer Tool. As I say for today's video we'll be flying the Ants Aeroplane to Tiger Moth from FSX. For those of you who aren't familiar with Ants Aeroplanes, he made some really nice add-ons for FSX and P3D, particularly his professional version of the Tiger Moth. Today however we'll be flying the simplified freeware version, that way if you do fancy giving the aircraft a go for yourself it's easy to access and download, I'll leave a link again down in the video description below. Our flight today will be a fairly short and hopefully quite scenic hop through the southern hills of Wales. We're currently on the ground at Abergavenny airstrip which is just out to the southeast of the town of Abergavenny. We're going to depart out to the northwest, initially passing over the town of Crick Howell, then on towards Langorse. And finally on to the town of Talgarth. Time in the air should only be around 20 minutes, as I said quite a quick and hopefully very scenic trip, and really just an opportunity to relax and enjoy the Microsoft Flight Simulator scenery. Anyway guys, as always I do hope you enjoy the video, if you do please consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. If you have any comments or questions for me, you can leave those down in the comments section below. Let's now head for the cockpit of the Tiger Moth, it shouldn't take too long to get the aircraft started, and we'll get her up in the air. So welcome to the cockpit of the Ants Aeroplane Tiger Moth. As you can see overall the aircraft actually converts quite nicely into the sim. Certainly worth giving a go if you're a big fan of the Tiger Moth or you do just fancy doing some more open cockpit flying. There are a few issues caused by the conversion. As you can see the GPS and the radio stack getting corrupted during the process. That's fairly typical with any aircraft that the avionics don't tend to uh, import correctly. A little bit unsightly but personally I don't really mind as it takes you back to the basics which is Really the whole point of flying an aircraft like this. The other major issue which is slightly more annoying is the cockpit uh, click spots don't currently work so you will have to assign the cockpit functions to either some hardware or your keyboard. Luckily though there aren't too many uh, functions available in the cockpit of the Tiger Moth anyway so not too much work to do there. Anyway again overall well worth converting as I say the aircraft is freeware it's readily available so no harm in giving it a try. Anyway, we'll get the aircraft started up and up in the air and we'll see a little bit more how it performs as we go. So the before start checklist, the elevator trim can go to the fully aft position. That's just to help us keep the tail on the ground once we've got some airflow going over the elevator from the prop. Switches are all off. Throttle is closed. Battery and generator can come on. The start itself will crack the throttle. We'll come fully back on the stick again just to help keep the tail down. Magnetos can come on. And of course usually we'd have a guy on the prop ready to give us a, a bit of a turn just to get the engine kicking over. He'd call contact, spin the prop, and we have a good start. We'll adjust the throttle to maintain around 800 RPM for the warm up. All pressure looking good. We'll set the altimeter. Instruments are checked, full pressure is checked, mags are on, fuel, as you can see we're showing about 50% fuel on board which is more than enough for our very short hop this morning, and the flight controls, are full free and in the correct sense. So we'll taxi down for the uh, north westerly runway, the threshold for that is just off our 10 o'clock. We're departing out to the northwest anyway, so that makes sense. It's all clear in the taxiing area. Again, no radio, so it'll be a no comms uh, flight today. 
Again, really back to basics. Anyway, feel off the brakes, taxiing forwards. Overall, the aircraft actually taxis very nicely, I have to say. You do tend to get a few strange behaviours from certain aircraft when you import them into the sim. Some aircraft don't really work at all, but the Tiger Moth does seem to work pretty well. Not too difficult to handle, but it does get a little bit trickier if you let the speed drop or uh, certainly you need to be very careful on the brakes. It's very easy to tip the nose over. And of course the, the visibility is pretty poor out the front, especially with our passenger there. I do like the fact we get the passenger though again, I think that adds a little bit more to the immersion, especially given that he does have some head movement included. And the anti-aeroplane Tiger Moth was actually a really nice aircraft, particularly the professional version. It'd be great if he does eventually port it into Microsoft Flight Simulator. That would certainly be my hope. I'd love to see a Tiger Moth come into the sim from some avenue or another. Anyway, just coming up on the threshold, so again, very gentle on the brakes. Not much wind here, so we won't worry too much about the direction for the run-up. We'll just get ourselves pointed out so that we can see uh, final. And on the brakes, the before takeoff checks, just coming up slightly on the throttle again. The before takeoff checks, the trim can go back to the uh, neutral position. Mixture is fully rich. Fuel is checked. Flight controls. Again, they're full free and in the correct sense. For the run up, then we'll come back on the stick up to 1600 RPM and checking the magneto, so we'll check the right magneto first as you can see it's about a uh, 80 RPM drop there, so that's within the limits back to both and checking the left, and we have the same drop on the left, and back to both. All pressures checked, we'll come all the way back to idle power. And as you can see, idling around 700 RPM, so that checks, all pressure still OK. And back up to 800 RPM. Lastly, we'll just set the uh, P8 compass for the first departure leg, that's a heading of 304. And that is set. So we're all clear on final, all clear upwind, we'll get ourselves lined up on the runway. Again, very gentle on the, uh, the rudder pedals. So we're all set and ready to go. Feet off the brakes, coming up on the throttle. There's full power, the uh, tail one needs to come up very quickly there, so countering that with some elevator. RPM is checked, oil pressure looking good. The aircraft actually feels pretty nice on the rudder, it's a lot better than many uh, payware third party tail draggers in the sim. And we're up. Climb speed is 60 knots, so we'll just lower the nose slightly, let the speed build up there. And trimming the aircraft accordingly. Climb power is 2150, so we're looking good on the RPM. And looking for that heading of uh, 308, so we'll just come slightly left on the heading. 
Flight plan time out to Crick Howell is uh, six minutes, so we're looking for a time of 2.5 on the flight plan log. More or less get on the heading now. I think we'll just climb up to around a thousand feet. We'll stay nice and low for the flight this morning just to enjoy the scenery as we go. And this is the uh, town of Abergavenny, just off at our uh, one o'clock. You just make out the uh, the railway line there, just passing out to the east of the town. The river as well, passing through. It looks on the map like there's some sort of uh, fortification or castle at the town itself. Can't really make that out there in the scenery, I'm not sure if that's modelled or not in the sim. Anyway, coming up on 900 feet, so we'll get the aircraft levelled off very shortly. And pitching the nose down, trimming the aircraft. Once the speed's built up to around 70 knots, that's our cruising speed, we'll come back to 2000 RPM. So cruise power is set. Yeah, just coming back onto that heading. More, more or less just keep the aircraft pointed at the uh, bridge line of this hill off at our one o'clock where it meets the uh, the valley. We've got the A40 just passing up below us on our uh, left wing there. Initially that follows our departure track but then that peels off towards the west towards the town of Brecon. We just want to continue to follow the uh, the river and initially the A479 out towards Crick Howell, as I say. Just continuing to trim the aircraft. Looks like we're in a very shallow descent here at the moment. We'll just more or less follow the uh, contours of the hills here rather than directly following the heading just to stay away from the uh, the higher terrain since we are cruising nice and low. And again this aircraft is really excellent for exploring the uh, scenery as you can see. Obviously a nice low cruising speed, so we really have plenty of time to enjoy the scenery as it goes by. And also, as you can see, the uh, visibility is actually pretty good. Obviously we do have the low wing there, somewhat blocking the view, but compared to something like the Waco, the visibility actually significantly better in the Tiger Moth. Anyway, three minutes to run, still good on the heading. I think we can actually see the town of Crick Howell just off the nose. After that, we'll be turning out towards the uh, west, just following the contours of the river. the uh, town just off the nose as you can see next heading will be uh, 280 so we'll set that on the P8 and this is Crick Howell passing just below us now 
So we'll just continue to follow the uh, the course of the river basically. And once the river starts to peel off to the northwest, then we'll turn out towards the uh, the lake at uh, Langorse. So I actually just uh, lost the river down there at the moment. Okay, it's just passing right below us. We'll swing out slightly more towards the north just to keep the river down below us on the left. Quick fuel check and oil pressure check, they're both looking good. And time-wise we're looking for a uh, time of around 3.8 arriving at the next waypoint. Really nice as well that the, uh, the anti-aeroplane Tiger Moth actually has a working P8 compass and that seems to work greatly in the sim which is really great to see. Even the, uh, the Flying Iron Spit doesn't have a working P8, or at least it didn't last time I tried it, so yeah, quite impressive again to see that we have that from a, an aircraft that you can pick up completely for free. Another two minutes to run towards uh, waypoint two. And then we'll turn north, as I say, up towards the lake at Langors. One more minute to run and then we'll be over waypoint two. Still got the river down below us. Little town down there, it's not uh, marked on the map but I can see the bridge. And you can see the, uh, the lake there now at uh, Langorse just off the right wing. So what we'll do, we'll just continue to uh, follow our track for now, just to, again, avoid flying over this high terrain here. And then we'll just visually make our way over towards the lake. We'll set the heading anyway, it's good practice, so the heading will be 003. Now we'll just start a uh, gentle right turn now. Just following the uh, contours of this little valley. Someone going for a nice leisurely drive just down below us. Altitude wise, as you can see, we have climbed a little bit there. Not going to worry too much about that today, really, just enjoying the scenery. We'll cut back in between this uh, hill, headed towards the lake. So a couple of minutes to run towards the lake, looking to arrive at around uh, 4 1. Just come back slightly again on the power there, the, uh, the RPM has crept up see the uh, cruise speed a little bit high there as well. And just passing back over the uh, A40 by the looks of things, which means the uh, town of Brecon should be somewhere off in the distance at our uh, 10 o'clock. 
Can't make that out though visually. Again though, overall what a uh, lovely pleasant flight. Scenery is really rather beautiful. Lovely to be able to peel along and take it all in. Anyway, here's the uh, the lake at Langorse, the uh, town just off to the north of the lake. We'll set the heading out towards Talgarth, that's the heading of uh, 015. Fuel's still good. So is the oil pressure. Obviously got the uh, lake passing just down below us. It should be a small road heading out towards the north from the lake. And we should have the uh, A479 just off the right wing. Might be it just down below us. We could follow that direct towards the town but we'll take up the heading instead. And again, rather than strictly following the heading, we'll follow the contours of the hills. So here we've got uh, Sangors just down below us. And in fact we can just see the, uh, the road leading out to the north, so we'll follow that. Little church down in the centre of the village. And it looks like there's a uh, river leading off from the lake. I'm not, again, seeing that on my chart. We'll just follow the road now and towards the town of uh, Targarth. Again, there should be some sort of uh, castle or fortification at the town itself by the looks of it. I'm not sure whether that's going to be uh, drawn in the scenery or not. Anyway, yeah, Targarth airstrip's just out to the southeast of the town, just out to the east of the A479 so we can hopefully distinguish it from one of those two features. And again, just trying to keep sight of our uh, little road that we're following out to the north. And the time out to Talgarth, we're looking for around another uh, three minutes, so arriving around time four or five now. So we've got Targars just coming off at our 1 o'clock, so we'll keep a really good eye out for the airfield. Uh, Talgarth just off the nose, just giving a good eye out for the A479. I think it's probably the road just off our uh, right wing at the moment. Yeah, it looks to be, so that's the A479, so we'll turn out 
follow that initially. And uh, Telgarth airstrip, as I say, it should be just out to the east of the road, just as the road uh, has quite a large right-hand kink in it. So here's the, uh, the curve in the road that I was talking about, as you can see, quite an obvious feature. So hopefully we just continue to track east, we should pick up the airfield. A little bit tricky to uh, spot, I think, with the surrounding terrain being so rural. But as I often say, that's why I really enjoy flying into grass strips. It's a nice challenge often finding them. I think I've got it now off at our 10 o'clock. It's just down below us there, I think, as you can see. It's actually a gliding strip in reality, but I'm sure they won't mind us paying them a visit. And sure enough, that is the uh, the airfield just down below us. So again, not much wind around, and we don't have a radio, so we'll just uh, do as we wish. I think what we'll do is we'll enter into a uh, left downwind from our present position. Again, really lovely scenery in the area. Anyway, we'll start turning onto a uh, downwind leg. Carry out the downward check, so the brakes are checked and off, undercarriage is down, mixture is rich, fuel pump we don't have, fuel quantity is checked, instruments are checked, laying light is not required, harness is secure. Approach speed in the Tiger Moth around 60 knots. Start turning onto a base leg now. Trim the aircraft as the speed comes back. Looks to be all clear on final. Obviously even more important to keep a good look out when we don't have a radio. nicely lined up on final. The uh, one thing I have noticed about the aircraft is the elevator authority becomes very strange at low speeds, unfortunately, so we're going to have to keep the speed up for the approach. And the flare is probably not going to be too pretty either. We tend to sort of run out of elevator authority during the flare, but I'll try my best to make it a uh, decent landing, of course. Let's touch down. Try and be gentle on the brakes, not tip the nose over. And getting the aircraft slowed down. Again, got to be very tentative on the brakes or you'll definitely tip this aircraft up. Anyway, we'll uh, backtrack the runway, we'll head back to the uh, parking area and we'll get the aircraft shut down so once again swinging around as I often like to do, we'll uh, get the aircraft shut down whilst enjoying the scenery, why not? So, back on the brakes, throttle up to 800 RPM. 
Now for the shutdown itself, all we need to do there is cut the mags. So there you go guys, I hope you enjoyed that leisurely meander through the Welsh countryside in the beautiful De Havilland Tiger Moth. As I say, it would be lovely to see a native version arrive in Microsoft Flight Simulator, but for the time being I think that the conversion works pretty well. Again, of course it does have its issues, I think that's to be expected, but given that it costs absolutely nothing to try, I highly recommend going and giving it a go. Again, I'll leave a link down in the video description below for both the aircraft and the conversion tool. As always, I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. If you have any comments or questions for me, you can leave those down in the comments section below, and I'll always do my best to answer them. And as always, thank you very much to my channel members and patrons for all of your support. Take care everyone, and I'll see you all again soon.